Media news for all races connecting to the world. This is MBN Network Media News for all races connecting to the world. MBN Network Media News for all races connecting to the world. Soft areas, but they actually mean a lot. 
and I mean, they will be ask, asking for too much uh, from the security agencies when it's time for them to respond. So that's one. Two is the fact that he then met with Governor Chikuma Saludo, and then there was that talk again about you know marginalization and how the appointment of a chief of naval staff may have just uh, violence of, of sorts, because this is something that has been clamored for time and again, and it was good to see a son of the soil, in some sense, visiting home, and I think that's also important for security, and I need to make this point, because we've talked about the community police and state police and having security domiciled, having your security agencies look like you, people you can relate with, it does a lot. So. What would happen to that conversation about state police, in fact, community policing as well? Because that's where intelligence gathering starts or stops. What the vice president, on behalf of the president, had said over the weekend that, yeah, they're trying to look at the intelligence gathering capabilities of security agencies. But I tell you, it starts from having someone you can relate with, someone you can trust around you that you can pass information so I know that this person will not rat me out. I think that is really important. So, well, it is good for the Southeast that we're beginning to see activities on different fronts, but we need to also talk about sustainability, Absolutely. which is this community state police. Which is one thing that I have always clamored for. I mean, um, last week it was, uh, Malco was raising issues. Where is the Ubiago, for instance? Well, uh, the court has decided on that one. <laughs> it is aren't functional or, you know, something. For me, currently, and, uh, you know, I've clamored for this forever. Southeasterners are highly industrious people. They are, I mean, we, we don't need to talk much about their capability to not just uh, raise economic, uh, you know, um, empowerment for themselves, but also raise economic practitioners, participants. I mean, they train their own. In fact, the apprenticeship model that's ascribed to the Southeast is now something that businesses, international businesses are discussing. So that is something for us to take a good look at. That's on the one hand. On the other hand, is how do we now begin to restore the economic prowess of that Southeast? All the things that could have happened that have been staved off as a result, not just of this city at home, but as a result of general insecurity over the years. Can we now begin to reverse the trend and ensure that our people are proud to go home and are not afraid that they could be attacked or kidnapped? Guys. Well said, guys. I mean, that's why we always reiterate that um, the, no matter the odds, the government is, at, is the box stops at their table. So they have got to ensure that um, all things about security they get it right, either uh, jointly, separately, whichever way, reach out to uh, any security hierarchy, apparatus, whatsoever, trust of the people. They all need to ensure that. That is done because look, there can be no excuses. Really. Yes, they, they've got some challenges, so it's up to them to get a lot of those things right. Because if they don't, I mean, last time out, we were making an example of um, football <laughs> over last week, where uh, I, I think we we'll we tend to see these kind of things almost across board now for elected positions when when it's time for. And then contestations, you see all manner of promises, and then they get there, then you begin to see, oh, this is because of this, and uh, it's too early. And then on a week, the Monday morning, to begin to accept whatever excuse that they churn out at the people now, I don't think it will cut it. I just think, look, fold your sleeves, pick up the gauntlet, and address the situation. I feel strongly about it. If we need to change the laws here, violence, let's bring it all forward because that is what we need to do to ensure that things go right. And um, some of the things that caught my interest over the weekend was that letter that was circulating, uh, ascribed to CGN, sitting powers of appointing judges, it didn't matter seniority or not. And so, but I think interestingly, some of the data is also picking up on that one here today. So we'll get some response. As a matter of fact, we, we're going to the dailies and starting off with Vanguard newspaper uh, regarding that matter. But above all, the lead story on the front page of Vanguard, as we start with the papers here today, has got to do with us, uh -huh. Nigeria. So look at that. Cool. We struck to avert threat against Nigeria.
निश्चय ओके सो आई नो दैट सेवरल क्वेश्चंस कंसर्निंग ऑल ऑफ दिस दे ऑलवेज विल बी एनीवेज बट लेट मी सी द राइडर्स टू हेल्प आउट इन एनी वे सेज हु वेल इंटेंडेड आई आई डोंट नो इफ आई एवर हर्ड any who is say that um it wasn't well intended i don't know <laughs> i'm sure i've heard in my entire life if you say it wasn't well intended i can't so remember by the johnson leaders uh-huh. and you have to ask yourself what exactly what are those people were able to achieve what it was that they set out to do um at the beginning of the so sometimes when the schools happen and you know my temple and people always rejoice there's always plenty of happiness and suddenly six months down the road it will happen and that's not exactly what it was then you know yeah. so sometimes we need, we really need to be very careful how yeah. we we talk by by you know leaders who say they mean well but at the end of the day you know have not done the right thing by even getting into office mm-hmm. and um, eventually you know because what what a military dictatorship is about is absolute power and we've been told that absolute power corrupts absolutely and you know i think it was uh benevolent dictatorship was used in the context and described in the eu yeah singapore and it's a of course several people will argue say what well, what do you mean the ministry never be used in the same breath benevolent dictatorship dictatorship is never benevolent Oh, yeah, but he, he was, was, was a I don't remember that Lee Kuan Yew was a military leader. No, I'm, I'm, I'm using the word leader. When you use the word dictatorship, mm-hmm. that's what, when you have coups like that, democratic rights usually take the back seat. Indeed. And so when that does happen, that term dictatorship is elevated. Because look, when you talk about military, what do you expect? They were not... Uh, trying to ensure democracy good no that's not the primary responsibility of any military across the world so in that context come a bit but back home here you get to hear most of those cool leaders those days oh no there's corruption things are not going on right our economy has tanked and that's what the narrative among several cool leaders in this country and look at where we are today so history we need to do a lot about that really history understanding our history so that we know how to navigate and proceed moving forward if we need to make sense of our future I my art and then uh, more of the writers here says explains why they didn't see Tunubu's delegation led by general Abdul Salami now was it Tunubu's delegation or Ekowasi's delegation um so because they used that in interchangeably because now uh several narratives we see here and there trying to turn the attention to Nigeria but they need to because I mean, even look at the headline here we struck to avoid to against Nigeria so but this is like a worse thing now yes this may be his own perspective but a big boss but when you look at where the, the circumstances under which he's speaking he was visited by Nigerian Islamic clerics Uh-huh. So you, you you I think it's understandable why he will try to justify you know his taking over power when he's speaking to Nigerian clerics in other words it's also in your own interest that's why we stop uh, I I think at the, the the circumstances under which he was you know addre- or the the group of people he was addressing will also inform the words that he'll use I mean he, he, there has to be a purpose if he has to you know make them feel good or make them feel okay hmm. um does that sound like politics the question is or politics <laughs> the question is should we buy it should we buy it here yes, indeed niger borders the whole of anna from the east to the west from northern from north east to the northwest they sit directly on top of our of our northern states and we can understand the apprehension of the states that directly border niger um and the efforts that they too have made to you know make sure that dialogue is really you know brought to the fore but then can we really just can we really just should we buy this that's a big question we'll, we'll see buy this we'll see as we progress uh but that's not all with the riders 
Uh, well, you also mentioned this one. Okay's dialogue, I see meets Nigerian Islamic clerics. Fight corruption, insecurity, not Niger Republic. Catholic bishops tell FG. Um, it's not FG, guys. We're going to fight Niger Republic. I'm going to keep reiterating all of that. It's an echoous session. Uh, even if it was to happen, it won't be Nigerian troops. They will not go in as Nigerian troops. So I expect people to know better. Prioritize dialogue, diplomacy, or be urges FG echoes. Okay, there you go. That's a better context. So, um, because if you don't speak to all of the persons involved, chances are that you might get what you call waste exposure. Okay, here's that part that I spoke about. NGC denies ceding powers on judges' appointments, promotions to governors. That letter did get some, you know, made the rounds, yeah, over the weekend where I was purported to have been signed by the CGN saying the governors will decide seniority. It doesn't matter if you joined in 1984 or 1992, uh, no. So now, they're speaking to this. So that's the importance of them clarifying things ahead of time. Fuel price hike looms as landing cost rises by 37.4%. So if you thought 617 naira per liter was the height of it, you thought wrong. Because now, who knows? Tomorrow Lagos might be buying for 617. I don't think they're buying for 617 at the moment. So, um... There you go. I think they enjoy the benefit of you know the port. The land's just behind us here, so hey, you don't need to factor in all those transportation costs and everything. But <laughs> who knows? No, but those of us here, <laughs> you are on your own. And those further up north, you are on your own. Well, oh, wow. if you can, just buy what you can today. You know, mm -hmm. I intend to buy little today. But really, today, little you know, tomorrow. a little today, a little tomorrow. You just have to see how you can get around. Well. Look at what you have on the front page of Daily Trust. Um, they also focusing on the ECOWAS matter. ECOWAS Niger's junta begin talk soon. Military rulers accept dialogue. Ulamas to brief Tinubu today. We thank Bagum to save Niger, Nigeria. I like how they attribute this. Coopies. That's what <laughs> Daily Trust says. That's what the coopies say. Why we shunned Abdul Salami delegation to that story is also on the front page of Daily Trust. Protest in Katsina for Bagum's release. Envoy seeks U.S. help. Stories on page four of the paper. Uh, you also see the stories here. Cano Hall fee increment by private schools. Okay, uh, that's a bit odd. That it is supposed to be a free market, unless of course the Kano State government intends to subsidize the private schools they intend to give them some money you know to make up whatever cost you know they're trying to but i think it's supposed to be a free market if fees go up and public schools are good government, federal government policy. you know federal government no even primary schools don't forget that you know this primary school even though it's under the purview of um, the local governments you know that state governments have taken over largely in many instances so rather than halting private schools you know who are running their own private business you can regulate it as much as possible but you can't halt see increments looking at the circumstances unless of course you have a way of mitigating it and then you work on a government-owned school so that people who do not have to who cannot afford whatever fees they're charging there will take their children to government schools. You know, it's supposed to be a, anyway, what do I know? Page 23, let me not get ahead of myself. I mean, that's what they call running away with the headline, right? So I'll advise you don't do that. Pick up a copy of Daily Trust and find out what that is about. Gombe Bochi Road Bridge collapses after downpour. Well, infrastructure that was not solidly built will certainly give way under this. This is the season for the true test of real infrastructure. Overhead tank collapses, kills teacher in a door. It's also right there on page 16 of the paper. And look at what we've always emphasized on this program, Chimney, how road crashes, safety issues, you know, seem to be taking more lives than matters of security. Safety we can control. 
in our security agents, we will say, okay, with our security agencies, we need to do so much more. But safety is within our purview. If we actually do invest quite a bit in education, there is so much that can be done with regards to safety. Look at that. Road crashes claim 4,387 lives wow. in six months. It's half a year. Oh, up to almost 5,000 people have lost their lives owing to accidents, things that could be avoided. We need to do a lot more. We need to do a lot more as a country, as a government, and as people. We need to do so much more. On page six is where you see the story, the story there, and uh, the invasion of the Afro remittance is contributing to Naira crash, as according to the central bank. I'm going to have to leave it there for Daily Trust newspapers. Take a look at the Guardian newspaper. Have you ever heard of the Fiscal Irresponsibility Act? Well, yeah, I'm sure you're wondering when did that come up, but that's how the Guardian leads this morning. CBN's Fiscal Irresponsibility Act investigates or probes CBN staff, consultants, NEBS, NSPMC. Yeah, that's the big story. Well, it's, it's been making the rounds from early in the weekend, and of course, yeah, building up, and clearly, this is a big one. It's a very, very big one. Now, NIBS is Interbank Settlement uh, Service. NSPMC is a security printing and minting. So, you're just wondering what's going on, really? You know, the, you know, a number of people, particularly concerning the Fiscal Responsibility Act, a number of people have been asking how come the CBO was able to overshoot its uh, borrowing to mm -hmm. the federal government above mm -hmm. 5% without the law being amended. You know, that's perhaps part of what this whole conversation is about. Um, so, if the investigator is asking questions, the investigator is asking questions from the CDS staff, I'm wondering what level of the staff they are. <laughs> it's a big thing to be at the top echelon, but hey, I guess we wait. When lots of things are happening, and I think as Pastor Baka said, yes, Nigerians should not be made scapegoats, but also these things should be done without, you know, politics, it should be done the right way, objectively. So even if it would affect uh, the current government, mm -hmm. even if it would indict the current government or members of the government, yes, I know that might be tough to ask for, but that should take its full course and the, the, the uh, what's it called now, the repercussions should of course follow. So it's a big one. Investigator probes, CBN staff, consultants, names, NSPMC. I see those pictures on the front page uh, telling the story all the more. Let me give you this one, might shock you. How fuel subsidy removal impedes justice administration? Yeah, you didn't see that coming right. But of course, it's a bit of a lot of things, but justice administration, who would have thought? Well, more details on the inside pages as well. And you see this one, it's in green. How 66 days of APC plunged Nigeria into further darkness by Labour Party. So yeah, that might interest you. Yeah, so is it darkness in terms of uh, power? Is it more than that? Well, that's why you have to pick up a copy of the Guardian newspaper this morning. Let's leave it there. Well, perhaps there will be an agreement on that, even perhaps within the party, if one could say, but then we'll get to that. The Daily Independent this morning has this on its front page. CBN Naira float may crash in a short time. Experts warn, say, Ni Nigeria not right to operate currency floats. When are we ever right for anything, really? You know, very, very difficult to if you ask me. Devaluation affecting productivity in manufacturing. Find the details on the inside pages, page 24 or 29 to be precise. Right above the nameplate, I mean, perhaps kind of follow up to that story in green on the front page of The Guardian. Chinobu has plunged Nigeria into chaos. Guess who? Bakari. Yeah. That same reference that you made. And that's the detail. That, that details on the front page continues on the inside pages. And quite a number of uh, other issues on the front page, including this one right under the picture on the front page. Aviation College outrage over missing 4.750 billion two trainee helicopters. Missing. Why is it in it? Commons, inverted commas. As in the same large helicopters, really large helicopters. Uh, so, missing. I can you just 
the missing, right? Senator Corey's rector petitions National Assembly. Helicopters were duly auctioned. Okay. Rector claims. So where is the money? Hey, the details you find on the inside pages. Um, that's the Daily Independent this morning. The graph. Um, kill corruption. Not Nigerians. Akari tells to uh, remember this uh, final word featured some years ago during that um, same Nigeria protest. So now, uh, same narrative too. When, um, as we started off talking about the uh, several cool leaders say there's corruption days and it was the same song. Last government, don't forget that it was one of the tripods. They were going to fight corruption, but today you can make up that what you will. Uh, whether how successful or otherwise that turned out, I think it will always be a sing song. It will always be a thing. Uh, if we don't have, I guess we'll wait and see because um, over there that chapter, there's a whole lot of things to be done in that regard. Uh, Look at the writer says, palliatives, no cure for citizens' sufferings. States, Tunubu lacks morality to provide ECOWAS leadership. Warns against scapegoating immediately. Accuses president of rewarding bad behavior with ministerial appointments. Mm. You know, because um, we had quite a lot to say yesterday as he was talking about how uh, EFCC, um, the EFCC chairman was probing uh, the former governor of Zampara State, Matawale, and uh, the EFCC chairman who was doing the probe is currently in detention, and Matawale, who was under the probe, has uh, been confirmed as a minister. So, you know, quite a lot he had to say yesterday. You know the thing about this is that um, perception is people's reality. Mm. So now, clearly, I mean, years on this job, you all will know that um, there are several other factors that played out. But this is the part that people see. So the, the people make their decisions based on what they know. Uh, and so, um, because we hear all sorts of things behind the scenes, why? But. It is what it is to people. So it's up to the government then to find a way to explain to people how that, how they think if they have taken the best decision, because of course that's what they expect, so that's what they try to do when doing all of those things. So if they can't communicate that to the people, then you have question marks. Um, if they have to convince people about that, who knows? So is it possible to reverse it? The probe will be challenging because if it's uh, been screened, if it's been passed, then they give you a portfolio. It's going to be embarrassing for the government to say, oh, no, we found a case against the stuff. So, look, we don't know if all of those have been factored in because look, politicians always tell us, we don't think like you guys. You guys think different. You know, this is how we do this politics. But, that's what is out there at the moment, so they need to do that. And if you missed that uh, sermon yesterday, no fun to watch it on our website. Uh, got the full one out for you. There you go. And then at the bottom to appear, 10th House Committees. Ibori takes over daughter's role as NDDC's chair. Okay. Okay. But that takes over as a parenthesis, so. Is it really by a proxy? Okay, well, I think they, they may have a lot on the paper because if you're asking questions about substantiating, just for you to note that. Someone's commission's top shots for briefing. Maybe this is why. And then briefing to is in parenthesis here. Reps lobby ex Delta governor for inclusion. In committee, contractors besiege Abuja, Lagos, worry residences. Wow, three locations there, guys. Oh. 
Well, no surprises. Don't forget that the former Delta State Governor was also in company of the other governors, uh, the 99 sects, we were told, who are sects. Sex, sex. 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 Not a religious group. <laughs> sex. Who visited the president? Um, in the villa, I and mean, you know, a group, remember that it was a group here, and they started right here in our studios. I'm trying to remember their name now. Um, what was that? No, 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 there was a, another group, Cielo. Yes, oh. which had big holes in that visit. Oh, yeah. you know, they had yeah. very strong objection uh, to some of the people in that group or in that set who visited the president in the villa. So, uh, no surprises here. Perhaps what it is that they complain about, mm -hmm. it's coming to fruition. This is precisely what they were afraid of. So you might want to look uh, on the page of New Telegraph to get details. What did you say the headline read again? 10th House Committee, Bori takes over daughter's role as MDDC's chair. So, just go ahead and well, see house that committee, one. That's a House Committee. She's an elected representative. She wasn't appointed, but then, I mean, <laughs> it is what it is. Uh -huh. And, uh, well, the rest is, there's a lot of politics too. They talk about open APC may implode over ministerial nominations. So, there's still a lot of... I don't think there ever been any time that this kind of thing happened. Don't find all this information saying, no, this And then at the end of the day, um, this one for us. People will speak up if they don't get it. So that's no telegram this morning. Well, take a look at this. The Abuja Inquirer, as we forget, I mean, I really wanted to take one of the consequences of the border closure uh, affecting our people. But let's take a look at what is ra happening right here in the FCT and the stories that are important to us. Security tops agenda as ministers get portfolios. Uh, criminals on free reign in FCTA offices. So you find details on page three of the paper. Is it because there's no minister, there's no substantive minister there? Is that why uh, the permanent secretary cannot take charge? Um, criminals on free reign in FCTA offices. So people are just going in there and robbing and what? And getting out in the FCTA office? Okay, you might want to read details on page three. As I said, don't run away with the headlines. Uh, you also see the, this here, Eme Fiele, Bawa, Tune Bakare slams in the local politics. Heads against Taco Pasta, it's on page three of the paper, so not one person reserves rights or criticism anymore. Page three is where you find details. Yes, indeed. You criticize, and other people reserve the right to criticize you. Yeah, yeah, you have a number of other stories right there. Trimming, we this is something that we mustn't, you know, let sleep. I really do not want to give voice to it, but it could be a sign of something that needs to be addressed very quickly. Coalition wants native to head FCTA. Um, you laughed, right? <laughs> it does sound laughable, but <laughs> oh, yeah. this is how agitation well, starts. They want, I yeah, this so. is how they start. So we need to start having those. We mustn't run away from those types of conversations. We must address them headlong. If we have said that this is what the FCT is about, and you know, we made really a very strong case. FCT is like a state, etc., etc. Appoint a minister, okay? So you appoint a minister, but let us remember that ministers that are appointed from the FCT or from any other state do not necessarily head ministries that are in charge of their states. So when you now start to say, oh, the one that is appointed from our state must, you know, be in charge of the FCTA, it's a problem. It's a very big problem. So uh, you might want to read page 15. Uh, to get what this agitation is about and whether these agitations should be swept under the carpet or not. Oh boy, I think uh, there are several things because I mean, if we elect our leaders to run certain things, we don't really expect to uh, give them the benefit of the doubt, as it were. But ones that need, they say they don't come up at this point in time because they use that a lot in business terms, separating that one to my needs. But who knows? Since they declared the ministerial nominee from and yeah. energy not BFCT. So apparently from that it doesn't suffice. They want to want take one more step. And so when that then happens, you find out that it doesn't matter how he or she performs. So I thought that is our own T one T one you remember how long can we continue? How long can we continue like that? Anyway, um
I guess that's it, right? Yes, indeed, it is. Okay, so that wraps it up for the look at the Daily Zero. But hey, of course, you know we love your views. Send them to us. We want to read them. So I might just go ahead and check just now. But we'll be back in a moment. Stay on with us. This is NBN Network Media, news for all races, connecting you to the world.